Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have the all new 2023 Genesis G90, which is a very impressive package coming from the Genesis brand. But how is the manufacturing quality of this Korean made model that is competing with the likes of Audi A8, Mercedes S-Class and BMW 7 Series? And also what is the interior like and how does it drive? Let me give you my engineer's perspective on the all new Genesis G90. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is my normal engineer's audit in terms of manufacturing quality and whether or not the panels are built right and aligned well. So let me do my gap check as well as also check for the paint quality and the paint thickness because those are all indication of whether or not this thing is well built. In case you weren't aware, the Genesis is obviously owned by a Hyundai brand and over the last several years, the quality and the reliability have improved to the point where they're quite comparable to the Japanese competitors. But what about the actual manufacturing fit and finish? Let me see how it is. So first I'm gonna do my usual panel check and alignment, but here's something very interesting. Because uh, Genesis have hired some of the top engineers from BMWs and other European brands, I've noticed that the engineering has become very clever. So if, for example, if you look at the hood, this is a clamshell design, a little bit like what Porsche does. And so you know what? You can't even really measure the gap because the gap is hidden underneath the hood that goes over the fender. And the front fender is really non-existent because this is all one piece here. And this part here is also cleverly covered by this interesting design theme. So you don't really notice the gap as much. I can kind of measure it still, and it's about three millimeter here. But for a normal eye, when you're standing up and looking at it, it looks like there's no gaps at all. Because once again, if you look at it from far away, the whole thing is going over the, the fender wells here. So that's a very smart engineering. Uh, but the rest of the panel, I can measure the gap. This one is about four millimeter. This one is 3.5 and back to about 3.6 millimeter. And the trunk is actually quite good at three millimeters. So I would say it's comparable to most of the Lexus brand and Japanese brand. Although I will say that the Lexus LS is probably a little bit better than the Genesis in terms of the actual quality of the gaps. And then in terms of alignment and panel fit, when I run my finger through here, especially the fuel cap here, it's also very good. I don't feel any kind of a misalignment. Although I feel like this part here is a little bit off the spec compared to the other side because I see a little bit of a dip in terms of the paint on the corner here. But overall, it's actually really good and I'm impressed with how all the panels come together. And what about the paint job? Well, it's a little bit cloudy day today, not the best day to evaluate the paint job. But the paint job is probably the most impressive part of the Genesis G90. It's got a really clean, very solid paint, no pigmentation issues, no orange peel in fact. And so I would say the paint job is actually better than some of the Lexus model I've seen. And in fact, it is definitely better than some of the European models like a BMW, Audi, and Mercedes, because it's a very consistent, very clean paint with a good clear coat on top. Let me measure the paint thickness to see how it is because it is important to have a thicker paint on a luxury car like this so that the paint will stay uh, durable and it will last for a long time. Let's measure the paint thickness now. So now I have the paint uh, thickness gauge which measures the total amount of paint including the undercoat and clear coat above the sheet metal. And uh, of course this car has a lot of aluminum panels but it doesn't matter, the measurement method is the same. And you want the paint thickness to be between 100 to 180 microns thicker the better. Most Toyota and Lexus models are around 120 to 125 perhaps, um, but some European cars are thicker because they tend to apply more paint or more layers of paint. Either way, I prefer to have a thicker paint because it's better for long-term durability. And also if you have to polish out any kind of defects down the road, you definitely want thicker paint. So let's measure the hood first. 354 microns, that is unheard of in a car of this price range. 359. So first of all, hood is substantially thicker than any other cars I've measured because even the thickest paint I've seen from let's say BMW or something, it's around 200 microns. This one is exceptional thick. Let's see if that's the case for the rest of the panels. 326, also over 300. And the front door, 342, that's unbelievable. And the rear door, 419. Something doesn't seem right. Let's measure this one one more time. 446. 
So it's actually super thick paint. I'm pretty sure this is intentional. 206 is a little bit thinner on the last fender here, but what about the trunk? 385. Would you believe this? The entire paint job of this vehicle is almost three times or at least two and a half times thicker than any other brands I've tested. If you compare it to a typical Lexus, you know what, this thing is substantially thicker. So I actually think that this was intentional. They must have applied either additional layer or maybe even two layers with thicker clear coat to come up with this amount of paint. No Japanese brands will do this because it costs so much money to add that extra layer in terms of manufacturing costs. So this is perhaps one of the key elements of this Genesis is that they are willing to do something different from the Japanese brands. And the fact that they're able to or wanting to uh, create a car with 350 to 400 microns show that they're paying attention to something that maybe other brands are no longer showing attention to. And that is to give you the maximum durability and maximum gloss because the thicker the paint, it's also deeper to finish and it looks fantastic in uh, light. Not today in a cloudy day, but under normal light, it would look really, really deep and beautiful. Uh, so I think this is perhaps one of the strengths of Genesis from what I can find so far. The paint job is fantastic and it has the thickest amount of paint compared to any other brands I've tested so far this year. So now I'm inside the G90 and this is the most impressive part of the G90. This is where other brands have to learn from Genesis because the gorgeous interior, the design and engineering behind it, you know what, is truly world class. Look at the selection of the materials in terms of the uh, brown material mixed in with black and beautiful chrome finish or semi-chrome finish and uh, just a gorgeous uh, feel all the way through. Everything feels tactile and there's still buttons fortunately and all of the areas that uh, your finger comes in contact has a really nice finish to it. And even when I do my usual punch test, I can't get anything to uh, feel loose or make a rattle. And when I'm driving this, it's absolutely solid with no issues in terms of squeaks or anything feeling loose. Everything feels tight. All the stitching looks beautiful in here and here. And the material selection, like I said, is just a beautifully done. And no wonder though, because they hired away some of the top designers from BMW and other brands. And you can really see a strong European influence on this. And you know what? The whole interior looks like something out of a $400,000 Bentley. And it looks better than most other cars in this class. In fact, it kind of makes something like Lexus LS feel really old and outdated in comparison to this when the price is almost the same. And they've just done a beautiful job. I do have to admit that there are some issues such as the fact that the screen is a little bit far for uh, controlling by, by touch. And then there's some weird things that's going on that I think is a cool feature, but in the real world, it's not so practical, like opening door with this button here. So one touch opens it, one touch closes it. But the problem is that if you open it and you want to open one more time, you kind of have to just push it. And then it kind of moves away, but it feels a little bit uh, strange and natural. The same thing happens when you're outside and trying to open and close. It's a bit awkward, even though the intention and the engineering behind it is impressive. By the way, to close it, I can press this button, or strangely enough, there's another button here that you can use to close it, which I think is not necessary because it's perhaps overly complicating everything. As an engineer, I prefer something simple. But the whole thinking behind the engineering and design, as well as the material selection, is truly world class. I even like this kind of a, a granite stone finish, which is unique to this Genesis model, and the whole mixture of materials just brings an element of uniqueness and a world-class feel that is missing in most of the cars in this price range. This car really feels and look like something costing twice or three times as much, and yet it is reasonably affordable for those people who are looking for a flagship luxury sedan. And I obviously love the interior, but if you're the type of person who really wants to be in the back seat to be driven by someone else, which is the main purpose of this vehicle, then you're going to love this vehicle because the back seat is roomy, it's comfortable, and with the one touch of a button, I can move the forward seat all the way to the front, allowing the back passenger to have maximum space. And that's where you really want to spend the time in for something like this, because it's not really meant to be a driver's car, it's really meant to be a passenger's car, kind of like a chauffeur-driven environment. 
Having said that, it actually drives pretty good on the road. So let me take you on the road and let me show you what I think. So now I am driving a 2023 Genesis G90. And this is where maybe you really appreciate this vehicle because even though this car was designed to be a kind of chauffeur driven type vehicle, it's actually quite engaging for the driver in a sense that it has immense amount of power and torque and surprisingly good agile character. It competes with the likes of Audi A8, Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series, but it's a lot cheaper than any of those vehicles and provides similar, maybe even more engaging feel. The steering is not all that numb. It actually provides a pretty good feedback from the road and the steering accuracy is good. And even when I make a quick turn like this, it tracks really well. So although this car is really designed for the passenger to be able to enjoy in the back seat or on the passenger side, the driver has a reasonable level of enjoyment when you drive this vehicle because it has a really good powertrain and it's comfortable and surprisingly agile around the corners. There's lots of technology underneath as well because the V6 engine has electric supercharger as well as a 48 volt mild hybrid to produce immense torque right off the starting line. And I can step on the accelerator like this and it just takes off in much the same way as electric car, even though this is not fully electric vehicle by any means. So I think the G90 for the very first time provides a reason for traditional buyers who may normally consider BMW, Audi, and Mercedes to drop those brands and to buy the Genesis instead because for all intents and purposes, this provides all of those luxury features and performance for substantially less price. And I will argue that the driving feel and the character is actually better than most of those vehicles. In a sense that uh, when I drove the S-Class uh, not too long ago, uh, this one is actually sportier, has a better characteristic in terms of drivability. And even compared to 7 Series or Audi A8, I think this one actually has a very agile character, which is unusual for a large luxury vehicle like this. And I know that this is a bit of a dying breed category, but uh, I really do enjoy driving it because it has a predictable character. So that's my conclusion for Genesis G90. And if I ever have to buy a flagship luxury vehicle, well, you know what? This is going to be on my list because it provides so much value for the money and the character is actually quite impressive. What do you guys think of the G90 and all of the things that Genesis offer these days? I think the reliability is also turning out to be pretty good in a Genesis brand. And I'm kind of curious how many of you guys would actually change your loyalty from traditional European brands to something like Genesis. If you haven't done so yet, would you kindly give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you can subscribe, that'd be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.